some politics the bipartisan talks committee has made further strides towards kicking off the talks as a 14 member team signed the framework agreement that details the structure of the talks and of course the negotiations now the agreement also ring fences any consensus reached in the talks from amendment by parliament now the committee will also receive public views during that process ktn's political affairs reporter emmanuel to with the details for the second day running the bipartisan talks committee made some headway with a framework agreement that details how the talks will proceed signed by both parties thursday the team announced it was bound by utmost good faith as the team seeks consensus on the 12 issues raised the framework agreement is the basic document that defines uh, how we operate what we cover and all those other issues in the 10-page document, the agreement states that the committee may receive financial support from the exchequer, partners and well-wishers with a rider that the well-wishers and partners disclose the source of their income and pledge that they will not influence the talks. The committee will be deemed as quoted when at least four members from each side are in attendance. During the deliberations, the committee will mark issues that have been declared as agreed, solvable and contentious. In the event of a deadlock, members will take a vote with a majority decision carrying the day. But in case of a stalemate, the matter shall be referred to both co-chairs and dealt with with the help of the coalition principles. However, when talks hit a dead end, members can take seven days leave and either suspend talks by notifying the members. The committee has also blocked parliament from tinkering with the issues agreed upon by consensus and contained in the final report. However, with the considerable steps made, the committee could still not agree on the nature of talks. We have unanimously agreed that we cannot be established or go ahead on the basis of an executive order or presidential gazettement. And there are many reasons for that. But the most basic for now is that you will recognize that in the respective issues submitted by both parties, there's contemplation of issues touching on the Constitution, which might well require constitutional amendment. There is a lot of hope in terms of us building consensus on the two other possible ways of constituting and formalizing this committee, that is uh, parliamentary and extra-parliamentary. All of us recognize that uh, it is important that all stakeholders are involved in this process, and therefore we want to exude confidence that by the end of Monday we will have agreed on a possible mechanism of formalizing the talks, and we will announce that on, to the nation on Monday. The committee says it has been forced to rule out the executive way of formalizing the committee to avoid the fate that befell the Building Bridges Initiative process. You will remember that the Supreme Court held in the BBI case that no amendment can be initiated at the instance of the president. And for that reason, we recognize that to the extent that some of those issues have been raised by the president uh, in parliament and also through these talks, then we would stand in danger of negating our work. Once done, the final report will be handed over to President William Ruto, Azimio leader Raila Odinga, and House leadership with recommendations to each issue. The bipartisan talks team will now be taking a break until Monday next week when they reconvene with a decisive decision to make as to whether the talks will be parliamentary or extra parliamentary. Emmanuel To, KT News, at the Bombers of Kenya, Nairobi. Says the 